Hey everybody, welcome to GTech. And in this current day and age, things like graphics cards aren't exactly easy to come by. Believe me, I feel your pain. We're going on what, seven or eight months since all the botters and the scalpers have been running rampant. I'm getting pretty sick and tired of it and I know a lot of you are too. Especially those of you running last generation and even older graphics cards. But if you're having troubles trying to check out as fast as possible with a brand new graphics card, then your best bet is to just be grateful for the graphics card that you have now. And what better way of showing your graphics card thanks for countless years of service than giving it a nice deep clean. Even just a quick dusting and a repaste can give your graphics card a couple extra years of life because it's not suffocating in its own dust. But there's just one problem with that. Tearing apart graphics cards isn't necessarily commonplace. I don't even know how to do it myself. So today, I'm gonna be figuring out how to actually, you know, tear apart graphics cards and you guys get to come along for the ride. Now there's a lot of different graphics cards on the market and honestly, they all come apart very differently. So I'm gonna be giving myself three shots. The three cards that I'm going to be disassembling today are this GT730 that I literally found on the side of the road. Something a little bit more high end, but still kind of budget friendly. This is a GTX 1050 Ti. And then lastly, I'm gonna be taking apart this big behemoth. This is a GTX 690, which I bought as kind of a collector's item, honestly. Now I'm kind of intimidated to take this thing apart, mostly because it's a dual GPU card. You don't see these very often. But at the same time, if it breaks, or God forbid if it's already broken, because I haven't had time to check it, I don't really care because like I said, I'm using it as a collector's item. I'm just gonna slowly start unscrewing this. Now these screws holding down the cooler to the die itself are spring loaded. And basically, you just want to unscrew them the exact same way that you'd be screwing in a CPU cooler. You just want to do, you know, your cross pattern, just go real slow. You don't want any of these exploding upwards. And then soon enough, one of them will come out. I know Gamers Nexus has like a PC hardware teardown mat so that you can do the exact same thing and organize all your screws. And after disassembling that, yeah. Whole thing just came right off. Okay, so I didn't even need to take out the four screws that are on the heat sink itself. Now there is this little fan right here, so you just wanna be careful when you unclip that. And then bam, whole assembly is taken off. Now, as we can see, that is one nasty, dusty graphics card. How about that thermal paste? I could still push it around just a little bit, but it's, you know, it's pretty crusty. So yeah, we're definitely gonna go ahead and deep clean this whole board and everything like that. Time for the vacuum. I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum up all like the surface dust and stuff like that. Anything that's just kind of, you know, sitting on top of the PCB itself. Basically the point of that is to just suck up any like the really big dust bunnies and stuff. I use my little brush right here to get, you know, a little bit more aggressive, I guess, because I can, you know, hit an area multiple times. It's almost like there's dirt caked onto it. I mean, that would make sense. You know, I found this thing on the side of the road. Yeah, and there's even like rust damage on the back of this rear IO plate right here. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's like right in there. It looks like it's even made its way onto the insides. So that's not great. Ideally, you'd want to like buff that out and sand it off if you can, or even just get a replacement one if you wanted to. But I have very little use for this graphics card itself. So I'm just gonna, you know, give it the deep clean. And now the same thing goes for the cooler. This is getting pretty nasty under here too. There's like, you know, some dirt there. There's some dust on the actual heat sink itself. That's a very small heat sink, but then again, it's not a very powerful graphics card. You know what? Let's try just taking the fan assembly off first. Now you really, really don't wanna lose any of these screws and you don't wanna mix them up either because some of them have different tolerances, like different heights and stuff like that. And basically everything is fitted exactly so that the heatsink is making direct contact with the GPU die itself. And now I guess another thing to keep in mind is you wanna make sure everything is sitting the exact same direction. As you can see, this lower like quadrant of this circular heatsink right here is a little bit shorter than these sides. And I know that this side is facing towards the actual PCIe slot right here. So you just wanna keep a mental note of that. You don't wanna screw anything up putting this back together. Literally all I'm gonna be using this for is to try and, you know, scrape off some of this thermal paste. It's just coming off in whole chunks. At this point, I'm just trying to clean off as much of the caked on and dried up thermal paste as I can. This is why it's not a bad idea to replace the thermal paste on your CPU every 
few years or so as the exact same thing happens to the thermal paste on graphics cards. It tends to get dried out and cracks, so not only is your GPU die not getting proper heat transfer from the paste to the heatsink, but it can potentially shorten the life of your graphics card by creating unnecessary hotspots on the exposed GPU die itself. From there, it was just about time to move on to graphics card number two, an MSI Armor model of a GTX 1050 Ti. This card is like a good middle point between the GT 730 I just finished cleaning and the GTX 690 that I'm about to clean. It's a fairly open card like the 730, but with just a few extra screws. First, I wanted to give the card a surface level dusting just to pick up any dust that I could. Cleaning the card in gradual steps like this, opposed to all at once, helps you keep track of each part and honestly just keeps your workspace cleaner so you're not trying to vacuum out a dozen components at once. The card disassembled relatively in the same way as the GT730. First by removing the four spring-loaded screws that hold the heatsink assembly to the GPU die and disconnecting the fan cable, which separates the two pieces. From here, I can get better access to the underside of the board and start cleaning in between all of the SMDs as well and clean off the old thermal paste. Since the GPU is pretty much as disassembled as I can get it, I now can remove the fan shroud from the heatsink and clean the two individually. A few small screws were all it took to remove the halves, which unveiled a huge chunk of dust trapped in between the two pieces. This, my friends, is why we do GPU deep cleans. Then, the steps are basically identical at this point. Soak some Q-tips in rubbing alcohol and wipe away the standing dust, get in between all of the cracks and under fan blades, and just try getting the GPU to look as clean as it did on day one out of the box. Just reapply fresh thermal paste, plug in the fan connectors, and do the same thing in reverse order to get the card back together, and that's how you deep clean a graphics card. Okay, so I've basically gotten both of these cards torn apart, repasted, and they seem, you know, good to go. I've cleaned them up. They're no longer covered in, you know, rust and dust and God knows what else. Now we're going on to the big kahuna, the GTX 690. Now, this is gonna be way more complicated than it, you know, really needs to be because it's a dual socket card. And this is the one that I'm definitely gonna be using the teardown for, uh, the teardown video. I'm gonna start watching this. And we're just gonna follow along because, you know, I don't know how to take this thing apart. So it looks like we're gonna take out the spring-loaded screws first. And because there's two GPU dies on this PCB, I'm actually gonna do them both at the same time. Get that even mounting pressure across both sides of the board. So now I've got all eight of these taken off, these spring-loaded screws right here. We're gonna need a Torx size six bit for these ones. I just kinda wanna keep all these screws organized, roughly the same pattern that they come off of the board in, because I do not want to put these in wrong or forget a screw or anything like that. Still stuck. Oh, shoot, I forgot a Torx screw. I see it now. Good thing I didn't pry that off too bad. Sitting right in the middle. So there are 10, 10 Torx screw bits. I could feel it. Oh, there it goes. There we have it. Okay. Gotta be very careful about those fan connectors. This might be a job for the tweezers. Well, that worked. My screws got knocked over. Look at that. Whew. That is one pretty PCB. Oh my God. To think that this was two flagship GPU chips on one board and now it gets slammed by like entry level cards nowadays. There's our fan assembly right there. Whole cooler. It's all stuck together. Our thermal paste. Oh yeah, that's like almost completely gone. Well, that's kind of the whole point of this, right? Take everything apart, clean it. So, you know what? Let's hit it with the vacuum first.
Okay, everything's basically put back together at this point. I've disassembled and reassembled the entire cooler assembly, so this is all clean and sweeped out now. So basically the last thing to do is to put the entire PCB back onto the cooler, mount everything together. So now's the perfect time to pull out these. Whatever thermal pads that you buy, you want to make sure that they're the exact same thickness. You don't want them too thick, you don't want them too thin, because then you won't have, you know, proper mounting pressure and all that good stuff. Now basically, as you can see, this is all one big thing. We gotta cut this up ourselves. I'd say that is just about the proper thickness of these modules themselves. So we're gonna make a ton of these tiny little things right here. So I'm just gonna stack them and keep snipping them. I've got the entire rest of this sheet left, plus a second one. So worst case scenario, if I run out, just cut up another set. And I think that just about does it. Everything I put back together okay. I'm not missing any screws or anything. So I think I just assembled a graphics card. <laughs> nice. That must be like a new personal best for me. Three graphics cards in one day. That was a fun experience though. I really enjoyed doing that. And you know, I learned a little something new. Uh, if you followed along with this at all, I'm not gonna be responsible if you broke anything. I'm sorry if you did, but you should know that I'm not an expert at this either. This was just as much of a learning experience for me as it was for you. But anyways, that's just about gonna do it for now. So if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you wanna see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed down below because I love making this stuff for you guys. And as always, have a good one. Honey, I'm a big kid.